Center in beautiful LaSalle, Ontario, the site of the 2016 Offs of AAA Boys Hockey Championships. This afternoon, a quarterfinal matchup between the St. Peter Saints taking on the Grand River Renegades. Hello, everybody. My name is Dominic Papa. More hockey action here on Wii TV. Glad to have you along for the ride. Got a dandy game here this afternoon, another quarterfinal matchup. The St. Peter Saints come into this game with a perfect 3-0 record. They've been flying through this tournament. 13 goals, four in the three games, and have only surrendered four goals in those three contests. So this is truly an outstanding hockey team. They are the number one seed. Their opponent, the number two seed, believe it or not, from Kitchener, Ontario, the Grand River Renegades. They come into this game with a 2-1 mark. 15 goals for four, so goal scoring is not a problem, but stopping goals, maybe a different story. They've given up 13 goals, so they'll have to be much better if they're going to find any success this afternoon against this St. Peter's squad. One of these teams will advance to the semifinals. Who will it be? We'll let you know as this all unfolds. Our play-by-play -play team is in place, so we'll send it right up to them. Mr. Brian Thompson and Steve Pronger with the call. Yes, and good afternoon, everyone. Brian Thompson alongside with our great color commentator, Steve Pronger. We want to catch up everyone on the earlier semi or quarterfinals in the day. Of course, if you were tuned into WeTV, you saw one heck of a defensive tilt between the host team and Cinderella Story Villanova Wildcats advancing to the semifinals with a 1 0 win over Holy Cross. Also happening at South Windsor Arena today, going all the way to a shootout, Gonzaga, a 3 2 victor over Sir Oliver Moat. So Sir Oliver Moat is out. Gonzaga will advance to the semifinals. They will take on the winner of St. Mary versus Bill Crothers. And this game here between the top two seeds, getting ready to shake hands here, they will take on the Villanova Wildcats in the semifinals as we send it to our man Steve Pronger. Steve, usually you see a one and a two meet in a final, sometimes a semifinal, never this early in a tournament. This should be one heck of a tilt. Well, I know our WeTV view, uh, we viewers, Brian, from both Kitchener and Peterborough have an exciting game on hand this afternoon. Uh, we're happy to have them. Uh, please stay tuned all afternoon on WeTV and certainly tune in tomorrow uh, for great uh, semifinal and obviously final action tomorrow morning. The coverage on WeTV starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, Brian, I'm looking forward to a great hockey game this afternoon. St. Peter Saints out of Peterborough. They are in the maroon with the brown trim. And hailing from Kitchener, the Grand River Renegades in the gold with the blue pants. Buck drop underway in quarterfinal action number three here on WeTV. This is the Offsa AAA Boys Hockey Championship. Saints flipping into the zone. Starting in net for the Renegades is number 35, Nathan Gillingham. Saints trying to get the puck behind the net. Goes out to Ogilvy. Down inside to Merrill. Flip it back behind the end to Hickey. Hickey look out front, shot! And it hits the side of the net. And the Renegades will just try and get the puck out. Renegades sitting at two and one here. The pass, got a lane. Goes through, shot! And he ends up going into the net. Renegades with the first good scoring chance of the day. Well, the Renegades coming out strong. I don't know about you, Brian. I thought I'd say a little bit of a hook there. We can say the Renegade player uh, staring or glancing at the referee, wondering, uh, hey, why wasn't that a call? But nonetheless, uh, as we look at Nicholas Mutton in net, uh, making the big save there, Renegade player cutting in, hooked down really before he had a shot crashing into Mutton. Just checking on the jersey of goaltender Mutton. Mutton, who had an outstanding game yesterday afternoon, yes, didn't he? Yes, he did. In that close tilt in the last action of pool play. As the is chipping it away. Young just flips it into the center ice. Regroup intercepted there by Chad Lacey. But the Saints control, they get in the end, it's Young. At the point, just flips it in for Foxen. Foxen going around side. They try to send it out front, nobody there, and they just bounce it off the boards and get it out of the play. Long feed for Arnold is disconnected, and just a quick line change here for the Grand River Renegades. Of course, them getting the late game in today, they're more than happy to get a little bit of a break after the furious action of three games in a day and a half. 
as Nick Weicker plays it off the boards and Cowie will just throw it around and Foxen will take the puck and out of Saints territory. Henhofer up to Weicker, gets it in the zone onside. <coughs> Looking for George, George feeds it up front. Goes off the pads of Mutton and off to the sides. Puck going all the way to the side and Cold will push it out. Now we got a bit of a rake of Sutton, one on one. Shot blocked, well played there by Henhofer. Puck still inside territory. Looking for the wraparound attempt and just can't get out in front of it as Button. Renegades dodge a bullet there as the puck will come just out of play into neutral territory. Wilson just flips it on net. Easily handled by Gillingham and he elects to play it. Playing without a stick, Brian. Not anymore. Off the skate there of Nathan Rowe. Will be controlled by the Saints. The Saints have not lost yet. They are th perfect 3-0 and in this tournament. Only one regular season loss all year. Has a big hit check there. And the shot goes into the netting. Want to note too, this game is the first that we've called where there are two referees and two linesmen. So we'll see a lot better on the offside calls today. So far, Nicholas Mutton get the majority of the work here in this hockey game. Uh, Scott McCulloch's team for Kitchener, no doubt going to try to throw everything they have at this young man early. Up to the point there for Nolan Kelly. He flips it in, but too many bodies. Puck stays in, it'll just be dumped in. Big hit there by Ellis. Controlled by Nick Andriot. And he's pushed off the play with two beats in on him. They try to use it, but Andriot steals the puck. Up to Laird. Looking up front, shot from the point, big pad save. Oh, just rolls under the pads and wide of Mutton. Good scoring chance there for the Renegades. Broken up. And the play will come out. Now we've got a three on two. It's Merrill. Holding it in, holding down on the play, and Hickey can't control the puck. But it goes back to Hickey. He looks for someone out front. Ends up getting shoved off, and it'll be controlled for the Relegades and coming out. Look for the lead pass. It's broken up at center ice. And we'll just do a wholesale line change here. Mutton playing it behind his own net, leaves it for his man. We've played four minutes so far of this opening tilt here. Shot into the Grand River end. Controlled by St. Peter, up the point, Cow. Shot blocked by his own man, Foxen. Nice hit there by Charles Cowie. Saints continue to control though. Graham up to Foxen. Bit of a strum loose down there, but it's kept in. Good tip shot on Arnold. Tip play there by Ethan Young, and it'll be corralled by Gillingham for the save. You know, we look at Gillingham there. He's had to come up big so far for his team, the Renegades, uh, Scott McCulloch's team. Yeah, right there. Gillingham's going to have to be the man. Uh, what I'm finding, Brian, uh, the Renegades are leaving people home or behind, as you will. they got to watch out for that. Puck back in. Going towards center ice, and the physical play really stepping up here. <coughs> Schumacher. Sends it around but loses the puck and it goes all the way into Beats territory. Now it's taken by Young. Young dancing around but he gets knocked off the puck and it'll come all the way back into Saints territory. <coughs> Young gets a stick on it, keep it on side. It'll be taken behind by Nick Weicker. Weicker starts up, makes a nice move. And gets it all the way down but unfortunately that will be an icing call with 9.36 remaining here in the first period. Yeah, 9.36 left to go. Both teams have come out, uh, not too many chances on the chances on each other's net. But one thing that stands out to me, as the Peets are hanging a guy down low, they're not exiting, exiting the zone as quickly as uh, the Renegades. Often the puck's coming back to them and they're uncovered. Face off one by the Renegades. Flipped out to neutral territory. This will be close for icing too. <coughs> Ellis ends up touching it. Uses the glass and gets it out. Icing waved off here. Kelly flips it for Dargan. Up to Andrea. Andrea looks for a lead pass. Gets it to Rowe. 
Rowe, one hand on the stick, just trying to throw it in front, and they're going to end up with a holding call here. Yeah. We'll see Grand River go to their first power play of the game, a holding call to Mitchell Ogilvy. This is a great opportunity uh, for Scott McCulloch's team from Grand River to get an early lead. Uh, we know Mutton's played well yesterday. He's certainly standing tall this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, Scott McCulloch's team has an opportunity now to uh, control the puck in the St. Pete's end, hopefully bring it back to the point, and we'll see some shots on net. Controlled by Dargan, thrown on net, goes wide. Nolan Kelly at the point, throws it up. He's got Andriot. Andriot looking for a lead pass. Tripped up on the play there, Nathan Laird, and he's upended. But now they got to rush it to the net. Laird. Passing on side to Dargan, and he just elects to put it behind the net. Up to Rowe. Rowe looking for that one-time pass, but two bodies in the air for St. Peter. Oh, it's kept in, though. Great job there as they just throw it on net lackadaisically. Yeah. Good control so far by Grand River, but just nothing quality so far on net. To Argon with a blast. Bit of a worm burner, barely gets to the goaltender, and the referee stops it when he doesn't see the puck with 802. Yeah, goaltender Mutton had no tough, uh, no tough time with that puck, Brian, and really that was the use your word, lackadaisical effort on that power play, quite frankly, from Grand River. Uh, you know, you have to move the puck on a power play for sure, but when you do it, you have to do it with authority, and you have to receive with authority. Face off one by Grand River, one minute remaining here in this penalty. Puck flipped out to the goaltender. Gillingham leaves it off for Henhofer. Schumacher going back into his own zone. He'll take the puck himself through two men. Easy little wrister, easy pad save there for Nicholas Mutton, and the puck will come all the way out. No hard shot so far on this power no, play. Brian, you know what? When you have an odd man advantage, a man advantage, it's not the time for a one-man situation. You have to put your teammates in a position to score. Find that odd guy who's not covered and get him the puck. Fox in with a good steal there, and he just sends it back into the Grand River end with 10 seconds remaining in this power play. One last rush here is Schumacher. Oh. Gets shoved hard from behind into the boards. That's going to raise the referee's arm, and we're going to have another power play as the first one expires. And they're going to call that a check from behind on yeah. Foxen. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. That happened right in front of us. It was quite a hit. We don't like to see any player in any uh, level of hockey get hit like that. Really not a smart play from the St. Peter's forward there. Uh, he had no opportunity. Uh, to pull up, he's going to say, but really, uh, you can always uh, turn away from an opportunity to check somebody like that. So second power play opportunity here for Grand River. Same units out. Kelly throws it on net, going wide, sitting at the top of the net. Button can't get the glove on it. Back out to Argon. Argon down to Laird. Laird up to the point. Pass intercepted though, well played by Ogilvy. He's fighting off three Renegades to get it out. And all the way back into Renegade territory. Lost play there, good grab by Hickey. Thomas Hickey with a valuable stop there to kill some time. And Grand River having to regroup here, this power play a little anemic, Brian. A little fundamentally <laughs> off. Yeah, they're, they're not bearing down on their power play opportunity or, or working it with authority, as I said earlier. Merrill with a steal. He had time. Ended up being pushed back into his own end by Nathan Rowe. And now a fight behind the net for the puck. Both teams using their arms here. And another big check by Merrill. This is the most physical game so far I believe I've seen. We're only... 10 minutes in. Yeah, you know what? Uh, games get established a couple ways, either by putting pucks in the net. If that's not happening, you'll see the body check start to be thrown. Pucks in the net or butts on the ice? Yes. <laughs> One time pass, great glove save by Mutton. Luke Kozak got all of that shot. 
but Mutton up to the task. He'll make the stop. 25 seconds remaining in this power play. Yeah, the, the you know the, the key of a power play is to isolate an individual in the defensive zone and get shots in that goaltender. There's always going to be an open man with a clear shot to the net. That's the hope. Puck won by Grand River. And once again, those one-time chances being broken up very easily by St. Peter. Up to Henhofer at the point. Shot hits the post. Now Lacey looking for a feed. They got the box set up. Got to move the puck around. Two seconds left. And the penalty expires. As Kozak tries to go through the entire team. Puck's still in the zone, though. St. Peter will finally get a little breathing room up and out. Backhanded pass fails. A bit of a hand pass missed by the referees there. And now Chad Lacey will take it out. Lacey skating to his side, looking for an open man. The puck comes out of play. It seems that most of the offensive chances for Grand River are just setting up for one-timers. Yeah, and they're, they're not finishing or following through. You can see it. Uh, good job on uh, St. Pete. If we look at their bench there on killing that penalty, they've had to do it twice. But really, the, the power play, the story is really lack of results on a renegade power play. Grand River 0 for 2 this early into the contest. But they are winning the battle in the neutral zone so far. Big crunching hit there, and we're going to get our first penalty now to Grand River, I believe. They're going to call this on Zachary Van Wick. Yeah, Van Wick couldn't hold up. Obviously, the ref taking exception to the fact, Brian, that he hit an individual without the puck. Now we're going to see how St. Pete responds with their power play opportunity. Uh, not a great effort on the power play from the Renegades. Let's see what St. Pete's got. The interference call comes with 14, 13 remaining here. So now we'll see what the Peets can do. Their highly vaunted offense. Scoring 13 goals in their three pool games. As the puck come all the way back into Saints territory and Ogilvy will start it up. Almost offside there as Saints have to retreat. Olivier started up again. Up the left side being trailed by Kozak. He gets it behind, one time pass. But couldn't get the back under on his Lamar. And the puck all the way back out. Mutton with three men back. Breaks it out, and one minute left here in this penalty kill. Merrill. He must on the puck, left for Lamar, and loses his footing on that slap shot. And the puck will come all the way back out onto Mutton. Blaine, if I could say, uh, the Renegades seem to be more effective on the penalty kill than they were their power play. Lamar. Right side, misses wide. Kept in by Ellis. Ellis just throws on net, missing of the glove. Possession still going there as Foxen throws it on net, and easy save there for Gillingham with 25 seconds remaining in this penalty kill. I was a little underwhelmed by the effort of the Grand River Renegades on that power play, but really I have been nothing but impressed by the way they're being aggressive, applying pressure, and killing off this penalty. Nathan Laird kicked out of the face-off circle. St. Pete's controls. Nelson throws it on net. Bit of a tip by Arnold, and it just goes wide. Good tip there. Arnold throws it back to his man. Sent up to the captain, Jared Foxen, and he'll come all the way out and end this power play. So no success for any man advantage here as the puck will come all the way down for an icing call with 2.07 remaining. Brian, it's quite often in the third period of any hockey game when you do not capitalize on power play opportunities in the first period, we'll be talking about it in the third period. It's both the, the what ifs of hockey. You have to capitalize, especially in tournament play when you have a man advantage. You've got to do it. 
Face off to the left of Mutton. One by the Renegades. Rose sends it back to Jargon. Throws it around the net. That's taken by Sutton. Renegades still control. Shot tipped into the netting with 1.55 remaining. But again, let's give some credit to uh, the penalty killing units we've seen so far. Often mm -hmm. they play under pressure. It's easier to play defense and why you're not playing with the puck. Saints change it up. Losing the puck behind his net was Ogilvy. Sends it around the side of the board. Renegades keep it in, but now pushed out. Arnold throwing it around on side to the captain. Foxen losing the puck. Three men on him. And be taken out by the Renegades. Tired legs slipping out all around the ice as Foxen poke checks it into the Renegade territory. Arnold back in looking for his man. He's got Young, tries to put on net, shot blocked. Ogilvy up to Ellis, and that shot's tipped, and that's going to hit the netting. Actually, the brick wall on the outside. And we'll have a face off inside the Renegade end with a minute 11. Brian, this is typically in a hockey game, one minute left roughly in, in a period where you see both teams try to settle down. Goaltenders are covering everything. Nobody is going to be willing to take a chance at this moment having their team go down into the second period. Face off one by the Renegades. They use the boards. A bit of a fan and a miss on the clearance attempt there, and Saints will control. Nelson, shot. Blocked off to the side. Van Wick, he loses the puck. Send out in front, and that's blocked too. Hill kicking the puck in. Trying to keep it on side, but the puck finally comes out, and they rule a hand pass with 42 seconds remaining here in this first period. Uh, good job of, uh, if we look at Van Wick, go to the bench there. He struggled with a couple opportunities to clear that puck in his own end, turned it over twice, but to his credit, he hustled back, covered up for that mistake. Uh, Grand River finds himself with a face-off out of their own zone. Update in our other quarterfinal, St. Mary's has just taken a 1-0 lead over Bill Crothers in the other quarterfinal, but we see Grand River putting some pressure up late. A disconnect. St. Peter now pushing up center ice, one-on-one -on -one battle. It's Hickey. Loses it and referee blows the whistle. Fans upset about the early whistle here, but they rule face off inside the zone with 22 seconds remaining. Grand River players got to watch his stick there. Uh, looked like, as we see him breaking a nice little slash there. A referee showing some restraint, letting that go. A big save by Gillingham to smother this puck. And of course, <laughs> the rough stuff that typically goes on uh, end of the period around the net, Brian. Cali will go it to the point with Ambrose Graham. Face off one by the Renegades, though. They just send it around. Puck tripped up by the referee, though. Renegades just wanted out with 10 seconds remaining here. Pete's trying to apply some last minute pressure, but it looks like we will be going into the first period scoreless and that'll do it no score after one period of play you're watching boys off the triple a hockey on we tv Monday, march 28th the best of windsor and essex county sports and athletics will be on display at the 11th annual westby awards the sports oscars of windsor and essex county joining the celebration and bringing her message of triumph and inspiration will be keynote speaker miss heather abbott a Boston Marathon bombing survivor. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reum Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East, and Windsor Essex Televisions, located at 6270 Hawthorne Road. Discounted group rates are available. For more information, please visit www.thewestbys.ca. The 11th Annual Westby Awards are brought to you by Unifor Local 444, Central Park Athletics, AM800 CKLW Radio, and WeTV. Make it a quick one. It's new. It's fresh. It's innovative. It's WeTV, Windsor Essex Television, and you can watch it anywhere. www.we-tv.ca is the place to be. If it's sports, entertainment, or community events, WeTV has what you're looking for. The people, 
people, places, and faces of our community are front and center on WeTV. Check out www.we-tv.ca for what's being webcast live. WeTV, we got you covered. Welcome back. Second period action underway here between St. Peter and Grand River. This off the quarterfinal action. Brian Thompson along with Steve Pronger here. Young loses the puck. Grand River skating right to left. Pass up feed for Young. He tips it in. Grand River will take the puck and get it out. Drop pass there for Rowe. He loses though, and Ellis will take it out. Ellis, the defenseman. Coming up, defense drop pass. Great save there by Gillingham. And a save there by Gillingham, and that'll freeze the puck with 14.05. Great save by Gillingham to start this period. That's what Grand River needs. That's what any team needs, quite frankly, to win in tournament or playoff hockey. This kid has been solid so far in the net for Grand River. Scott McCullough, coach, must be thrilled with his play. Let's hope the rest of the team can respond in like. Face off to the left of Gillingham. But the Renegades will take the puck out. It's Kozak. Along the left side. Loses the puck. Makes a hit after, and the Peets will clear the zone. Now Grady. Back as the Peets try and start some sort of check, and the pass missing there, too. They wave no icing, though. And Givlin will miss it. And a bit of a loose puck there, but can't get to it is Eric Sutton, and it'll be frozen by Gillingham for a faceoff inside the Renegades' to end. Yeah, you see defenseman uh, Wicker there uh, reaching up to grab that puck. Unfortunately, didn't grab it. He knocked it down in the direction of Gillingham, and uh, Gillingham had to come up big to avoid uh, St. Pete slapping that by him. 13.32 remaining here in this second period. Cowie controls the point. Leaves it for Lamar, but he loses the puck. Cowie just throwing on net. Easy stick save there for Gillingham. Another point shot and another good save by Gillingham. Now the Peets drive the net. Merrill stopping in midair. Good stop there. That puck taken by Logan George. But the Peets still applying pressure, still keeping the puck in. It's Merrill. Throwing it around the boards for Graham. He throws it back around. Merrill losing the puck. It's Cowie with a point shot, and that's tipped wide. Renegade's just trying to get the puck out of their own zone. Lamar keeps it in, and it'll just be flipped out. And tip all the way back. Button keeping it going. He might regret that those are Renegades set up here. And shove it back into Saints territory. Cowie. Off the boards to Hickey who loses the puck. Both teams just passing the puck to each other here in the neutral zone. Hickey looks to start some offense. They just dump it in. That'll be controlled by Nolan Kelly. They'll chip it, but Merrill keeps it inside. They rule it's going to be a high stick. Nobody wants to touch the puck here. And the referee just blows the play dead with 11.48 left. Yeah, I don't think Grand River knew how to respond. Uh, it was Grand River's puck to collect it up, but they didn't want to touch it. And uh, neither team appeared to know what to do there. So here we have a face-off right to the left of uh, Nicholas Mutton. Off one by Grand River. And a scoreless game here in the quarterfinals. It's Rowe. Takes the puck in, plays off the board, and delivers a nice hit after. But the Peets plug up the zone, and Foxen will just send it out. Gets tipped at center ice. But they still rule icing with 11.24 remaining. A bit of a slower start to this second here, Steve. Yeah, a term we used, uh, whether it was last game or uh, yesterday, it looks somewhat like a badminton match, right? Either team just high off the glass into the zone, 
then you hunt down the puck. What's the other team do? They do the same thing. Back and forth, tennis, a badminton match. Face off one by the Saints. Played off the boards, but kept in by Grand River. Good job there by Nolan Kelly. He throws it into the corner where it's met by Ellis. And Arnold will just flip it out into neutral zone. Big hit by the Saints bench. It results in Arnold keeping the puck. He's looking for Foxen on the one-timer, but hits his skate. Another one-time chance. And Young just can't get his stick on the puck. That results into an odd man break here for Grand River. Shot goes wide of the net. All the way to the side of the boards, three Saints there. And they get it out of play. As Arnold keeps it on side, leaving it for Young. And Grand River will take the puck and move it out of the zone. Referee blows the play dead for a hand pass. Brian, it appears that Grand River is very casual with that puck. I don't know what it is today. Maybe it's nerves. Maybe it's exhaustion from two days of play, multiple games in, in a few days. But they really are casual when they move that puck. They need to bear down and move it with authority. Uh, they just seem to be lacking that skill at the moment. A shot. Nice blocker save there by Mutton. And the puck will come all the way back out to center ice. Hallman chasing after it, puck up in the air, and it'll be taken by Hallman in the corner. Hallman over to the Kozak, he sends it out front of the net, and Mutton will get down and freeze the play with 10.08 remaining. But despite that, despite my last comment, it seems like Grand River is getting ample chances on the net. Uh, they are putting pressure on Mutton when need be, and uh, they are leading, uh, sorry, they're not leading, but they could lead, rather, if they just pop one in. Sutton. Right into the midsection of the defender, and now we've got a two-on-two -two break. If you can get a hold on the puck, but Caleb Hallman having difficulty securing the puck. we will just flip it in. Mutton will easily freeze that with 9.51. Those are always tricky, aren't they? Uh, Bouncing those pucks? <laughs> Bouncing pucks coming at a goaltender. Uh, you know, some of them, we've seen them go in, even at the highest level of professional hockey. Update from our game in South Windsor. Also, Bill Crothers has tied the game. It is 1-1 out in South Windsor in their other quarterfinal matchup. Exciting action happening both in Windsor and LaSalle for this offset tournament. Also, we want to remind people to keep it tuned here tomorrow. We've got semifinal action as well as both the bronze and gold medal game happening here on Wii TV. We hope to see you tomorrow. Ambrose Graham throwing around the side and bounced out. Good chase here by Young. He's keep it in. Merrill shot blocked well there by Van Wick. Van Wick going down on the play. They look for a penalty. They're going to get it. Gillingham goes off. It'll be a six on five here until St. Peter touches the puck. Glove saved there by Mutton, but it'll be the third power play of the game now for Grand River. Yeah, I suspect that'll be checking from behind or cross-checking. It looks like the referee cross just said no cross-check, so there you have it. Uh, Grand River not very successful. Brian, as we see Merrill going to the box, box there for St. Pete, not very successful on their first two opportunities. Uh, Scott McCulloch, the coach, maybe can help them tighten them up. They really just have to slow things down, move the puck with authority, and find that open man for a shot. Faceoff will be to the left of Mutton. First two power plays did not look very good for the Renegades. We'll see if they shape things up here in the second period as the puck sent off the boards and all the way back into Renegade territory. Gillingham on the chase by Sutton. They retreat back. Yargan will try again. Yargan up to Kelly. Sending it back. Andrea. Leaving it for Diargan. Up down the boards to Rowe, but he loses the puck. And Slithers down the side, but still in play, and then finally out of play here into Renegade territory with a minute 10 left. Diargan. Skates up center. Goes on side, waits for something to be set up, and plays it behind the net. Skating past many St. Peter players. But puck taken out, lost glove there. On the ice by one of the Renegades players and played back out. It's just 
constantly broken up here for the Renegades. They just can't seem to get anything going, can they, Brian? Uh, I don't know what it is. They're struggling when they're playing five against four. Laird sends the puck in, being chased by Andriot. Andriot pressured by Ellis. And Young will try and clear, it goes wide. Andrea goes around the side. It's met up though by Hickey. And Hickey just throws the puck and out of play into the Grand River territory. 15 seconds remaining here on this power play. Renegades taking their time here. It's the Argon. He's been out there for a while. He just shoots it Whoa. on net and hits the post. Most effective power play move they've had so far. And another penalty coming up. What a physical, physical move there. And that will be the fourth penalty to St. Peter. As we watch Young head to the box there, uh, we're going to see this uh, penalty come up here uh, very soon. Here it comes. Defenseless player. Yeah, whether you call it a hit to the head, which I think is what we have, or an elbow. Uh, you know, Young was a little too aggressive for his team's liking. Uh, this gives another power play to uh, Grand River. Well, if they're having trouble with their power play, they're certainly getting enough practice. Their fourth power play chance on the day is send up front, scores! Fourth times the charm, Luke Kozak ties the game at one. Yeah, finally on the power play, their fourth opportunity in this game, and really Kozak finds the back of the net. Uh, it's about time, the Renegades are probably saying that. It's Coach McCulloch on the bench. Uh, here it is, puck off the face off. Kozak finds himself in front of the net. Uh, no way that uh, Mutton could keep up with him, tracking side to side. Sure, it's time for uh, Grand River to celebrate being up one nothing halfway through the second period. Kozak breaks the deadlock. And just like that, no time for celebrations. Lyndon Lamoir scoring for the Saints on the one-timer. And we are tied at one, just like that. What Lyndon Lamoir. Yeah, what a quick turnaround, Brian. Look at him. No doubt he's a happy kid in front of his own bench there. Uh, what a turnaround. There it is. Quick cross ice pass, but so many times, so many times in hockey, you see one goal scored at un end, team responds, goes down the other end of the rink, tie score, one nothing. Wow, we've had all the scoring in one minute. Spread it out, boys, it's a long game. Nelson drops the puck back into Renegade territory. Met up by Merrill, but Grand River will push it in. Givlin sends it around the board that's met up by Lacey. Now shot in. Pete's pushed the puck past the blue line. Marilyn Hickey bring it on. They've got Nelson trailing. Hickey throws it on. Lacey just could not get a stick on it. And now the Grand River will break out. Pushed off the puck there is Lacey. Physical play continuing. Lamar just dumps the puck out, and this will go all the way back for an icing call with 5.53 remaining. Right, both goals so close together, Brian. We were 0-0 for quite a, quite a while, half the game. Now we're 1-1 within a matter of a minute, but both goals had something in common. When you can get a goaltender moving side to side, that's your opportunity to score. When a goalie can plant his feet, stay square, not much of a chance, get the goaltender moving, you'll score goals. Grand River wins the face off, the puck tipped and will go out of play. Of course, stay tuned here in the secondary mission. Dominic Popple will be here with a special interview. As well, third period action of this quarterfinal. Of course, we'll keep you up to date on the other quarterfinal happening over at South Windsor Arena. Face off one by Grand River at St. Peter. Try to clear it, kept in at the line. And yet again, tipped in. Yeah, and uh, this is great hockey this afternoon, Brian. And I know there's lots more in store for our WeTV viewers. Certainly, we have three games on tap for tomorrow. Eight o'clock in the morning, one o'clock and three o'clock are the medal rounds. Uh, 
We invite everyone to come back to us tomorrow to enjoy this great high school hockey. 8 a.m. hockey, it's not just for Europe. <laughs> Saints tip it out. Grand River clogging up the zone though. Now they've got a three on two. Shot there by Andriot. Doesn't get through and Foxen will just take it out. Arnold loses it on his skate. Just backhands it into Young. He's got Foxen trailing. Good break up there by Diargan. Saints still pressuring and a glove save there for Gillingham with 5.06 left. Yeah, one of the things that the Renegades have done very well today is start playing defense up ice. It, it, the last place you want to have to play good defense is really in your own zone. That, people, that may sound strange to some people, but if you fail at playing defense in your own end, you have players in on the goalie. Start playing defense up ice, it's the best place to be. Saints controlling the puck behind the net. Lamar sitting at the point. He's got the goal for St. Peter. Trying to muscle off the puck there is Jock Jeske. But Merrill will take the puck behind the net. Lose it, Grand River will take it in the corner. Leaves it for Schumacher. Schumacher being chased by Merrill. It's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles happening inside this defensive end here for Grand River that they're losing. Yeah, the maroon shirts seem to be dominating those. Cowie, shot, backhand try, and Lamar can't get on. Good pad save by Gillingham. Puck on top of the net in the back. Did we hear a whistle? The play's still going. It sounded like it. Grand River getting the puck out, though. There's the speedster, Logan George. Tries to get around his defender, he does. Goes backhand on the wraparound. Can't get a shot on though. And the puck will come all the way back out to neutral ice. Weicker being chased by two Saints. Just sends it up to center ice as there's a change. Icing waved off here. Merrill controls. Sutton calls for the puck at center and gets a stick on it but blocked out in front. And the Renegades will clear. Here comes Darren Givlin. Givlin gets around his defender, looking for someone to help. Play tripped up, bodies all over, including the goaltender. And the puck will come all the way back up to neutral territory. That was the pass to nowhere. It was. You heard of the parkway to nowhere. This is the pass <laughs> to nowhere. Givlin loses it up center. Backhands it safely out of his zone. The puck will come all the way back into Grand River territory, three minutes remaining. Ben Dobbs gives chase. St. Peter looking for that late goal. Grand River will just get the puck back all the way into St. Peter territory. Givlin, the interception at center ice. He sends it up to Kozak. Kozak shot. Bad save there by Mutton. Grand River looking for anything. Another good shot. And just off the blocker of Mutton, a play will be frozen with 228. Grand River is a uh, unusual team. And what I mean by that, not unusual people, obviously. Uh, they're well coached. Uh, they're high school athletes. But just when they seem to be in a lull or they seem to be lackadaisical, again, there's that word, they seem to be able to break up ice and put a shot up on net, Brian. Update from South Winds Arena. That game is tied 2-2 between Bill Crothers and St. Mary's. Winner of that game will play in the semifinal at South Windsor tomorrow. Kelly trying to feed it up center. It's lost, and Andriot will just send it up the boards looking for his man. Two minutes remaining here in this second period of a deadlock or quarterfinal between the top two seeds in this tournament. As Arnold falls down on the play, and it'll go back into Saints territory. Foxen. Leaves it on the blue line. Tricky offside play there. A lot of sticks up center, center ice, but Arnold will take it in for the Saints. Arnold going up towards the net. Play broken up by defenders to the Renegades, and it'll be taken out. Laird. Two men trailing him. Knocked off the puck by Ogilvy. And the 
the Saints will take it out of the zone to mid ice. Arnold will just hit it in, go off for a change. Ogilvy, big hit up there, giving chase. Fox and the captain just backhanding it out, leaving it for Lamar. Lamar, he's got Young and four defenders, sends it up. And play broken up in front of the ice. And the Renegades will just send it out and it will go all the way into Pete territory for icing call. 58 seconds remaining here in the second period. Well, what do you want to see in a 1-1 game with a minute left in the second period? Uh, you either want to see someone step up and make a difference, uh, propelling their team into the second intermission with that all-important one goal lead, or you're going to see two teams, Brian, that are just going to shut it down, take no chances. They don't want to make any mistakes going into the intermission either. Referee giving instructions. to St. Peter. We saw earlier in the game too, the referees giving specific instructions to the St. Peter team. I have to wonder what's going on. It's Grand River with 45 seconds left. Making an attempt for a late goal. They just sent his own. Have to tag up onside. It's controlled by Cowie. Cowie sends it up, broken up. Now it's George, up front, he's got Jesse, throws it on net and is sent aside by Mutton. Renegades applying all the pressure here. Now Saints safely get it out of the zone, it's Merrill. He's got Lamar with him. They look to stand in front, they've got two bodies there. Lamar up to Cowie, shot scores! Did it count though? Time expired, the referee has signaled goal. Yeah, I believe you're right, Brian. There's no video review, I don't believe in offside. They're gonna count this. Yep, referee pointing to the net. I believe uh, that goal is going to count. We'll oh see. my. There's no time left on the clock. As you know, Brian, here's the replay. Great cross ice pass to the backdoor man coming in from the point. Tremendous shot as time expires. Wow. Uh, St. Pete's takes a two to one lead going into the second period. No objections there by Grand River on that, so it will stand a two to one period lead. When we come back, we'll have recap of the tournament so far. You are watching the OFSA AAA Boys Hockey Championship here on WE TV. It was one of the most beautiful summer's day. Pushing the guy aside, and then I was on a burst of speed. It started out as a very bad marriage breakup. One day he said, you guys want to get on your bikes? I remember the coconut guys, remember the beach. My memory of going to New York City was just elating. I decided that I'm going to Scotland. That's me crossing the goal line. I remember going out on the lake. When I reached that rock, I thought of my mother and I knew that I had done it. He takes the lid off and all these creepy crawly worms on and he would pretend to eat them. I just remember us circling around out in the park. She just looked up at me and she said, I really love the new house, mummy. <laughs> you know, I, I hope that was a memory for him too. Putting the key in the lock and knowing that we were, we were gonna be okay. Would you give up that memory for money? No. I, I, Absolutely not. It's too too close to the heart. No. No, oh, no, I don't even have to think about it, no. A comprehensive financial plan and an investors group consultant will help get more out of your money so you can get more out of life. From the opening tip-off to the final basket, the St. Clair College Sportsplex will host the best Canada has to offer in women's collegiate basketball. March 16th through March 19th, Eight teams will be putting their best on the floor to gain basketball supremacy at the CCAA level. Complete coverage of this action-packed event hosted by St. Clair College Saints Athletics can be watched exclusively on www.we-tv.ca. We TV, bringing Windsor and Essex County to the world. 
Welcome back to the Balmer Center here in LaSalle. Brian Thompson along with Steve Pronger here for this exciting quarterfinal action here at the Office of Boys AAA Hockey Championship. We have a two to one game here, Grand River and St. Peter. And Steve, this is a one and two seed. We knew this was gonna be a heck of a game. That second period was nothing short of fantastic. Yeah, and the way, <laughs> quite a way to end that second period, Brian. Uh, defenseman coming in from St. Pete's, getting that cross ice, cross door pass, putting in it as time expires to give St. Pete's a two to one lead in this all important uh, third period. Wow, what a game these people are watching. But you know, we come to expect that from St. Pete's. Uh, they won three and zero in pool play. They waltzed through that session. They come in now, hopefully to play in the medal rounds tomorrow. They're well coached uh, by Steve Stanlick and really, uh, to me, they've been the standout team so far in this tournament. Luke Kozak opening up the scoring for her. Grand River, um, but answered right back, like five seconds later, Lyndon Lamar getting a one-time pass, and then Charles Cowie scoring with no on time Monday, left March on the 28th, clock. the best of winter in Essex course, County sports Earlier and today, we had on one heck of a quarterfinal matchup between the host team and Cinderella story of this tournament, the Villanova Wildcats, a one nothing winner over Holy Cross in a tremendous game. Yeah, I heard on Sunday, this past Sunday, uh, coach, um, <laughs> coach of the Villanova Wildcats on the radio with Dominic Papa saying, we're just happy to be here. We have no expectations. We have the youngest uh, team in the tournament, but wow, Brian. 4-0 after today. They've beaten everyone they face. They're finding themselves with an opportunity to win a medal tomorrow. Completely unexpected, but congratulations to the host, Villanova Wildcats. The Villanova Wildcats will take on the winner of this St. Peter versus uh, Grand River game. Uh, also happening today are two quarterfinal games at South Winds Arena. Earlier today, we had Gonzaga and Sir Oliver Moat heading to a shootout. Gonzaga winning that one 3-2 to two in a shootout. And right now happening at South Winds Arena, they are just finishing up the second period. It is 2-2 two to two between St. Mary and Bill Crothers. The winner of that game will take on Gonzaga at South Winds Arena. I want to remind people, these semifinals are happening tomorrow at 8 a.m. We will have coverage here on WeTV of that game between the host Villanova Wildcats and, Gonzaga, er, and the winner of St. Peter and Grand River. As well, we will have the bronze medal and gold medal games. The bronze medal game happening at 1 o'clock p.m. and then shortly after at 3 p.m. What they're all playing for here today, the gold medal game of AFSA AAA Hockey. Yeah, and we're happy to be here. We're happy to be broadcasting those three games tomorrow, and I would encourage everyone to tune back in. Uh, Brian, when this tournament started with 16 teams, we had no idea who no. was going to find themselves playing tomorrow. Now we know for sure one of the teams are going to be Villanova, the host team. I think people who love high school hockey are, are, can tune in, see the best of the best tomorrow here on WeTV. It'll be tremendous action. Bill Kelso will be here with the call for the games tomorrow, but we still got one period of hockey to play here in a 2-1 to one battle between the number one and two seeds. When we come back, we will have exciting third period action. You're watching the Offsa AAA Boys Hockey Championship exclusively on WeTV. It's new, it's fresh, it's innovative, it's WeTV, Windsor Essex Television, and you can watch it anywhere www.we-tv.ca is the place to be. If it's sports, entertainment, or community events, WeTV has what you're looking for. The people, places, and faces of our community are front and center on WeTV. Check out www.we-tv.ca for what's being webcast live. WeTV, we got you covered. Manpower, that's our specialty. We use it to build infrastructure, like the Billion Dollar Parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. 
In Canada, more than 13 million volunteers contribute over 2 billion hours every year. Volunteers support us in everything we do, and communities thrive because of it. At Volunteer Canada, we encourage and strengthen community involvement. We work with a broad range of partners to promote and support our shared vision of a vibrant Canada. To learn more, visit the new volunteer.ca, your connection to Canada's volunteering community. What will your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide. The average Canadian will spend their last 10 years in sickness. Change your future at makehealthlast.ca. One out of seven children across Canada are at risk of going to school on an empty stomach. That's why Breakfast Club of Canada provides a healthy breakfast to school kids nationwide every day, which can help to build a bright future for Canada's children. But there are still many more children who need our help. So please help us provide breakfast to the children who need it. Donate now on our new giving platform, ICanGoWithout.com and visit BreakfastClubCanada.org for more information. Rachel, I never realized that your mother suffered from lupus. Yeah, it is a chronic disease and I've seen my mom go through long-term remissions and then I've seen her almost die. Um, so I really hope they can find a cure so other people don't have to go through this. There are more than 50,000 Canadians living with lupus and this number increases each year. To learn more about lupus and how you can help, go to lupuscanada.org. Welcome back here to the Vollmer Center in LaSalle. Two to one. We have a St. Peter lead. And wow, what a way to happen, eh, Brian? Well, no time <laughs> left. We're still getting over that. No time left on the play. A goal by Charles Cowie. As we get to the third period, it's sad to see one of these two teams going home after today. Yeah, Cowie made a great play there. Uh, obviously very late in the period to sneak in back door from his point position, receive the pass and put St. Pete's up two to one. Ethan Young wins the face off for the Pete's and we're underway. This is it, third period. 
Arnold sends the puck inside the zone. Renegades try to chip it out. It's Andriot. Up to center, met by two Peets. Pass taken away from Young by Diargan. Renegades regroup inside their own zone. Nice tip there by Ethan Young. And the Saints just keeping all the pressure so far on Renegade territory. Andrea, once again broken up. This will go inside Pete ter or Saints territory. Andrea with two Saints on him comes out with the puck. And lost up the side by Cole Ellis. And both teams will get a line change a minute in. Let's see what the Renegades can do. Both teams liking to get up to center ice and just shoot it in. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they want to play with the puck uh, the entire uh, entire ice surface. Schumacher bullied off the puck there. Kept in nicely by the Argon. Renegades trying to get something going here. Down two to one. No call on a trip there. Now uh, Pete's just feed it up. It's Coles. One on one. Loses the puck though. And the Argon will just calmly send it around the side of the boards. Now we'll come back to the center ice. Nelson banks it off the glass and just that badminton hockey we were talking about. Seems it doesn't matter what game we call, both teams need at least five minutes to break in. Shot, yeah. shot there by Nolan Kelly, tipped and just come out of play here. Captain Ben Daub for the champions of Kitchener. They just flip it outside. And both teams once again will make changes. Lamar, he's got a goal in this game. Here's the puck inside. Just back and forth hockey here. A little over 12 minutes remaining here in this third period. Ellis loses the puck, decides to go all the way back into his own zone and just flips it out. And will come all the way out back into Renegade territory for an icing. Want to update people on the other semi or quarterfinal happening out at South Winds Arena. It is now a 4-2 St. Mary's lead over Gonzaga. They have a little bit of time remaining in the third period. Brian, it seems that both teams at this point don't want, want to play hockey without the puck. They figure if I don't have the puck, I can't make a mistake. But if I can put pressure on the other team, hopefully I can force them into making a mistake. When one team has the lead, the other team can't afford to wait for the other to make mistakes. Another skirmish right up the blue line. They rule play was moved offside and they blow it dead with 11.53. Yeah, you and I see that clearly from our vantage point. However, the mind of a teenage hockey player, uh, you know, they're in a little bit of turmoil right now. They, uh, they clearly, they, they, one team wants to protect the lead, the other team wants to get the lead back or at least tie the game. There's a lot going on upstairs for both teams. Of course, I want to say hello to our viewers from both the Kitchener and Peterborough regions. We hope to see at least the winner back tomorrow for our exciting semifinal coverage. The winner taking on the host Villanova Wildcats. It's still a lot of hockey left to be played here. As Weicker will leave it back into his own zone for Nolan Kelly. Kelly flips it all the way up the ice and it'll be calmly taken by Cowie. Saints been, haven't been able to move the puck too far into their own territory in these first four minutes of the period. There's now Lamar coming off the side. Shot's tipped and it'll hit the boards and out to the other side. Kept in by the Saints though and now it'll be out. Here come the Renegades. Shot on by Schumacher goes wide of the net. No chance on the rebound there and the Saints will move the puck. Hickey. Up ice to Ellis. Ellis shoots it wide. Ogilvy to be there for the rebound. He just throws it towards the net, but nobody's there for it. Foxen down to Cole Arnold. Renegades will grab the puck and tip it out. It's Andriot chasing after. 
Andrew out losing to Ogilvy and Foxen will try and corral the puck and get it out. Renegades moving it off. Coach is shouting instruction, tip, one time pass there and Weicker just can't get his stick on it. The Saints can't move it out, it's been all Grand River this third period. Now Nathan Rowe laying the body on. Physical presence here, one time pass and not ready for it is Nick Andrea, he had a wide open chance. Now point shot by Weicker, shot scores! It was tipped in front. Nick Weicker will celebrate. We'll see who that gets awarded to, but we have a tie game, 9.54 remaining. I believe Nathan Rowe ends up getting the tip in the goal. Yeah, we'll look here on the replay, Brian. Maybe we can see it a little clearer, but regardless, it was a great, great shot from the point. Renegades moving it back. We see Riker taking the shot from the point there. Good wind up on that. Someone got a stick in front of it. We're not sure who. Uh, wow, 2-2 two -two hockey game with under 10 minutes left. Great job by the Renegades. There's Coach Scott McCulloch, happy. Look at the smile on his face for sure. They're back in this hockey game. Uh, 10 minutes to go, anyone's game now. Nathan Rowe, his first goal of the game, tying it up with 9.48. Yeah, great shot from the point again by Riker. Um, Renegades played that perfect. Bring it low, bring it high, move it, put it up on net. People go in the net, anything can happen. Great goal, great goal for the Renegades. Grand River continuing to control the play here in the third as they keep it inside the Pete's territory. Sent around side, Kozak shot, pushed up front, Mutton on. Mutton trying to freeze it, puck still loose. Pete's just hammering at it behind their own net. Coming very vocal in the stands now, the fans getting into this game between the top two teams. Grand River continuing to apply the pressure. Kozak, blast it, look for a tip, it goes wide. Puck will come all the way back out and it'll be corralled by Gillingham. Nolan Kelly, he's got two Saints on him. And it'll be played up by Sutton. Lost Owen just flipped out of play and the Saints will take the puck all the way back into their own territory. Graham losing the puck. Bouncing puck here in this third period, even after the flood. Lots of hockey been played on these ice in the past few days. Saints send it out into neutral zone. Be corralled by Nolan Kelly. He'll use the board and almost hits the linesman. Graham will just flip it back into play for Renegade territory. Josh Jeske, showing the guns and it takes it up to George. George falling down on the play. There's lots of bodies in that neutral zone. He'll come up with a big shot there by Jeske. Bocker save. And they try to get the puck off the back of the net. They do, referee not making a call. Very good. Amar, up to Hickey. Two on four. Shot going well wide of the net. Now a breakout, they're looking for a line change, but you got a break here. Josh Jeske taking on the entire Saints team himself here. Ellis finally pushing him off the puck. And Jeske can look for a line change here, he's a tired boy. Saints moving the puck up, center ice. Ogilvy just throws it on net, big juicy rebound, but he can't get to it. Good kick pass there by the Renegades. They move the puck up. 2-1-2 two two here. Trying to make a move is Nathan Rowe. But just a little too much mustard on. Now we got a 2-1-1 break here. Excellently corralled by Zachary Van Wick. And just like that, now we're starting to get some very attractive hockey as both teams move in the puck. Rowe can't settle the puck down. Being batted back and forth in neutral zone, and it's Andrea. Andriot's got Weicker, back shot. Just blocked and sent out wide. He's stopped by Henhofer, he'll throw it up and is blocked and sent out to the side. They'll struggle to keep this one in. It's offside and they'll have to blow it dead. Players not being able to hear that with 6.38 remaining in this tie game. Grand River really showing us some good puck movement there. They were sharing that puck well. Uh, last uh, segment of play, Brian. 
Uh, you know, both teams turning it on. You can feel it up here in the rink. You can probably see it on the screen at home for sure. Wow, 6.38 left. Someone's got to make a difference. We can report that the game is finally in second intermission at the other rink. St. Mary's leading Gonzaga 4 to, or Bill Crothers rather, 4 to 2. The winner will play Gonzaga in the semifinal tomorrow. But the main event is sitting right here at the Vollmer Complex between the top two teams. Who will get that all-important next goal? So the puck will come all the way back out into Renegade territory. Gillingham holds up his arm and will get the icing call with 6.13 remaining. It seems to me that the Renegades, uh, Scott McCulloch's team, they're, they're coming on strong. We haven't seen much play to our left here. Uh, Gillingham haven't had much to do in the last two or three minutes. Uh, all the action's been down here. St. Pete's and uh, Mutton's got to be the one to shine for his team. Has not been St. Peter's period so far today. Control there. Oh, just couldn't get the stick on it. it was Nolan Kelly, but he controls the puck. Throwing it back in the corner to Givlin. Givlin throws it up front. Just couldn't get a man on it. And the Pete's on an odd man break here as Foxen leaving up. And Kyle Nelson muscle off the puck, trying to get a save. Right, four bodies down, and oh my goodness, Gillingham caught off guard there. Lost the puck. I think he's under it. And a faceoff will come into Renegade territory, 6.13 remaining. This is what every hockey fan wants, end-to-end -end action. It, nothing's better when you're enjoying a hockey game. Gillingham sprawling on the ice. Here we see it. Good opportunity, bounces off the post. Gillingham sprawling at this point. Uh, he's lucky to be where he is because the puck is found underneath him. Good job by Gillingham protecting the lower part of the net from his belly. Gillingham just adjusting his equipment. Any chance these teams can have to grab a breather, I'm sure they'll gladly take. <clears throat> Their fourth game in three days for these teams. And they want to play two tomorrow. Van Wick can't clear the end. Renegade just flip it on net. But Mutton not chancing anything, he'll freeze the puck. Yeah, great shot of Mutton there, uh, doing what he has to do to slow it down again in his own. But Brian, you know what? The way things are going, we may, we may see, sorry, another 10 minutes of hockey from this one. Yeah. We do have overtime. It will go to a 10-minute five-on-five. And if that doesn't settle things, we will have a five-man shootout. And if that doesn't settle things, Yahtzee. <laughs> Lamoire. Gets around his defender, shot. Blocked there by Ben Dobb, and then it'll go out of play with 5.36 left. Yeah, Steve uh, Stanlick's team just seemed to want to put everything on net, and why not? Uh, you know what? They got to throw up prayers or frisbees, anything going at the net. We see how the second goal was scored for um, the Renegades. Get a stick on a puck in front of net, it bounces off your back, whatever it takes. Face off one by the Saints. And this Struggle to keep it in, but do. Now it's Hickey along the left side. Good sprawling move there by Henhofer defensively. And now they try to race to the puck and avoid the uh, icing. No such luck on the speed there for Nathan Larry. He'll come all the way back into Renegade territory. Renegade player thought he might be able to outrace the St. Pete's defenseman there. It didn't happen. Uh, St. Pete's gets a very much needed face off deep and low in the Renegade zone. Renegades control the puck and they'll get it out. Andrea trying to get around two men. He's got Rowe with him. Rowe just throws it on net and goes well wide into the corner. Controlled by Weicker. Gets around to one defender. Battling the whole team by himself. That's tipped and it'll hit the netting. And face puck will stay inside the St. Peter end. Good work there by Nick Weicker, though, taking them yeah. two forwards. Yeah, that's how you do it at that point. You know, you, you grasp it slightly, you put it at your feet. He made a nice, uh, what I would call a Bobby Orr, any outy twisty, turny move, but try to put the shot up on net. Both and teams are going to have to get pucks on the net. Someone wants to win this game before regulation is over. Any outy twisty, turny move is copyright by Steve Pronger. All uses and rights belong to him. Controlled by the Renegade, shot by Chad Lacey. So as the puck throws it out front, tip pass. Just can't get it towards Mutton. St. 
St. Peter will try and get it out. Their play is picked up. It's a two-on-one now. It's Foxen. Oh, and he just can't get the stick on it. Good break there, but bouncing pucks have been the bane of St. Peter's existence so far today. They've had a few chances just go over some sticks. Hill just shoots it back in. And both teams will make line changes here. We're just about four minutes left here in this quarterfinal action. St. Peter moving the puck along. It'll just be taken by Diargan. Move back. We'll see what happens here. Grand River making a move. It's a two on one. Schumacher with his man makes the pass. Shot! Blocker saved by Mutton. Oh, Josh Jeske, the big hulking guy, could not get the puck just over the shoulder. Now Nolan Kelly. Back in around looking for a man in front. Can't score. Now it's Merrill with a screen in front. So there it is. Uh, gee, we're at three minutes left. Anything can happen. Anything can happen at this point. Uh, who's going to make a difference for either team? Is it going to be a goaltender? Is it going to be a defenseman, a forward? We don't know, Brian. The good news is the viewers watching this on WeTV are going to, they're going to have, uh, someone's going to be a hero. Are we going to have a villain too? A villain makes the hero. Andrea, Andrea gets around the defender, shot! And pad saved by Mutton. 2.45 remaining, great play there as we see Andrea showing the skills, but no luck. Yeah, uh, under three minutes again. Uh, I don't know if I have a villain. If someone takes a, someone takes a penalty late in the game, that could be a villain. And taken Boy. by Rowe. We almost saw the winning goal right there. Dobb tries to keep it in, but it'll come all the way back out. Holds his hands for icing. And we're getting it right back in St. Peter territory. 2.35 remaining. Yeah, what a game this afternoon on Wii TV, Brian. Uh, as I said, someone's going to be a hero. Someone's going to make a difference. And, you know, somebody in two minutes or more, if we go to overtime, are going to go home feeling sad. You know, both teams have won. Both teams have earned their way here. But someone's going to go home in uh, two minutes plus overtime. I'm surprised we haven't seen any Villanova players here scouting. Hopefully they're not back in class already. As Foxen gives chase around two defenders, trying to get around his man. The referee's letting him play here. Ogilvy will stop the puck inside. Good tip by Young there for something out front, but it'll be taken by the Renegades. Renegade's trying to apply the pressure. St. Peter getting it right back out. Tipped by Foxen. He's He'll just it. send it towards net. And Gillingham will freeze the puck. 2.05 remaining. Yeah, he had to freeze that puck there. It wasn't a time to play it. Now is the time of the hockey game where back checking and identifying people is critical. You have to back check with a purpose. When you come through that neutral zone, cross your own blue line, Brian, you have to identify people, pick up a man. Everyone needs to be covered in the defensive zone. Face off one by the Renegades. They send it around the boards. Controlled by St. Peter, though. Set to the side. Shot goes wide by Cowie. Nelson can't keep the puck on side. He'll just backhand it back in. They fight alongside. It's Merrill. He's got a lane. He's got a shot. And Gillingham couldn't find it. It's under his pad and glove. He makes the big save though, minute 38 left. Yeah, great individual effort by Merrill right there. Uh, that young man was desperate to score that goal. He wants to make a difference, but what a save by Gillingham, and here it is. Merrill, big shot, Gillingham smothers it in that big equipment of his. Cowie backhands it, keep it in for St. Peter. Hickey, now along the side. 
Merrill just throws it on net, looking for any sort of rebound. And Nelson just drilled. Now the Renegades will push up ice. Lots of bodies in that neutral zone, and who comes out with it? It's Hickey. Hickey trying to get it around his defenders, drops it off to Merrill. Merrill loses the puck. Too many defenders for the Renegades, and they just calmly flip it out, and it will be another icing call. One minute and one second remaining here in this tied quarterfinal. I've seen this a couple times. We look at the St. Pete's coaches bench there. You, you're thinking two things. Do I let the momentum play itself out, or do I want to rest my better players? Do I want to call my timeout, maybe rest my guys? You know, it could go either way. Well, we won't see any goalies pulled as we see a timeout awarded to St. Peter. And there yeah, you go. These teams need a breather, especially for this critical juncture of the game. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere, though. When we come back, we have more exciting offsa quarterfinal action here from the Boys Hockey Championship in LaSalle, Ontario. Tip off to the final basket. The St. Clair College Sportsplex will host the best Canada has to offer in women's collegiate basketball. March 16th through March 19th, eight teams will be putting their best on the floor to gain basketball supremacy at the CCAA level. Complete coverage of this action-packed event hosted by St. Clair College Saints Athletics can be watched exclusively on www.we-tv.ca. We TV, bringing Windsor and Essex County to the world. Welcome back here to the Vollmer Complex. It's getting loud, it's getting wild. Two to two, St. Peter and Grand River, the top two seeds. Only one of them will advance to the semifinals tomorrow. Take on the villain of the Wildcats. St. Peter, antsy. Grand River's antsy. Face off inside the Renegade. Oh, and Lamoire just missing the great chance there. Now we have a breakout for Grand River. Nathan Rowe being battled at with Ellis. Hickey lose the puck, but Nathan Rowe centering it. And nobody there for him. Diargan throws it on net. Doesn't get through. St. Peter diving all over the place trying to settle it down, but Lamar keeping it down. Saints come up with the puck. It's Lamar sending it around his net to Ellis. Ellis trying to poke it out. And finally the puck coming out of Saints territory. Calmly flipped in by Diargan. It'll be met up by Laird. Laird back to Kozak. Lots of bodies, 10 seconds remaining. They gotta throw something on net quick here. Being stuffed to the side, one time chance! And just going wide. We are going to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. The top two seeds wanna play some more hockey and you're gonna get it free of charge. Wow. Brian, you know what? Uh, every hockey fan's dream is to watch a little more hockey, especially in a great goal like this. And uh, boy, on Monday, late March in the game, here it is. Uh, seconds remaining. Grand River has an opportunity. Pass out front. Whoa, just wide of the net. Uh, Mutton standing strong there. So, Brian, your take on this, uh, the first three periods, <laughs> we're back where we started. Nothing, it's nothing. the best game of the tournament by far. Sure, we're looking at uh, the coaches there, the Grand River bench. Now we get a shot of uh, St. Pete's. I know what those coaches are saying to their players. They're congratulating them on one hand. Congratulations, guys, you've gotten this far. But at the same time, let's have a strategy. Are we going to dump and chase? Are we going to control the puck? We are going to see our best, best 10 minutes of hockey in a few minutes, Brian. Referees giving instructions. Of course, it is a 10-minute five-on-five overtime, as in any playoffs. As well, if that does not work, we go to a five-man shootout, just like the old Olympics. Every team will show five. Afterwards, if they were still not settled, teams continue to send one skater apiece. You have to play your whole bench. You can't just throw out the next guy and have him shoot three or four times. The old Ovechkin rule, I think they call it. Right, that's right. It will be your whole bench if we have to go that far, but who knows? Ten minutes of play, we're going to get a quick five-minute overtime, so we'll take a quick break here. When we come back, overtime, the boys' AAA hockey championship here on Wii TV. From the opening tip off to the final basket, the St. Clair College Sportsplex will host the best Canada has to offer in women's collegiate basketball. March 16th through March 19th, 
eight teams will be putting their best on the floor to gain basketball supremacy at the CCAA level. Complete coverage of this action-packed event hosted by St. Clair College Saints Athletics can be watched exclusively on www.we-tv.ca. We TV, bringing Windsor and Essex County to the world. On Monday, March 28th, the best of Windsor and Essex County sports and athletics will be on display at the 11th Annual Westby Awards, the sports Oscars of Windsor and Essex County. Joining the celebration and bringing her message of triumph and inspiration will be keynote speaker, Miss Heather Abbott, a Boston Marathon bombing survivor. Tickets for the Westby Awards are available at Bob Reum Sports, 4275 Tecumseh Road East, and Windsor Essex Television, located at 6270 Hawthorne Road. Discounted group rates are available. For more information, please visit www.thewestbys.ca. The 11th Annual Westby Awards are brought to you by Unifor Local 444, Central Park Athletics, AM 800 CKLW Radio, and WeTV. It's new, it's fresh, it's innovative, it's WeTV, Windsor Essex Television, and you can watch it anywhere. www.we-tv.ca is the place to be. If it's sports, entertainment, or community events, WeTV has what you're looking for. The people, places, and faces of our community are front and center on WeTV. Check out www.we-tv.ca for what's being webcast live. We TV, we got you covered. Manpower, that's our specialty. We use it to build infrastructure, like the billion dollar parkway. That's real manpower in action. End to end over 1,000 strong, forming bridges, carving out tunnels, shaping roadways. Our manpower is in demand. Well-trained, highly skilled, tough as nails. We've got what it takes to build your career. A solid career for building a better future. Layuna, feel the power. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. Welcome back to the Vollmer Center. We're just going to recap the scoring quickly for you. No scoring in the first period. And Grand River opening up the scoring in the second period. Luke Kozak on assist from Jeske and Schumacher. But then right away answered by St. Peter with Lyndon Walmar on the one-timer from Hickey and Merrill. And then Merrill once again getting another assist as Charles Cowie scoring with no time left on the clock for a 2-1 lead. But at, in the third period, Nathan Rowe tying the game on a beautiful shot. We are at 2-2. Two two. And Steve Pronger... This has been one heck of an advertised tilt between the top two seats. Brian, I've really enjoyed this game, certainly working with you, but also watching it as well and making my comments. Tremendous game as we see the officials gather. It all matters now. This is the best 10 minutes of hockey anybody can expect. And which goaltender is going to win this game? Quite often it comes down to them. Puck is dropped and we are underway for overtime here in Offsa AAA quarterfinal action. Diargan sends it up ice. Goalies stay in the same spot they were for the first and third periods. Rowe muscled off the puck. St. Peter will just flip it out, and the puck will stay inside the St. Peter end. Yeah, and I look at that body check along the side uh, wall across from ice next to the St. Pete's bench. You have to be careful. If you take a penalty in overtime, it can be disastrous. So you're really going to check. That's fine. Keep your arms and sticks away. Referees have kept their whistles in their pocket for the third period. We'll see if that continues as Ogilvy gives pressure. Pete's trying to clear the end. Grand River scored both of their goals at this end so far this game. See if they can get one last. Puck will come all the way out for icing, 9.14 left. 
you can win overtime hockey very simply. You control the puck down low. You, of course, you're going to attract people towards you. They want to protect their net. You bring it out high to the point. That pointman puts a shot up on net. We saw uh, Grand River getting their tying goal like that. Get people to the net. Anything happened. Pucks go off of bodies and sticks. You win hockey games. Want to keep updated on our other quarterfinals. St. Mary's up 6-2 to two on Bill Crothers, so it looks like they will advance to the other semifinal uh, tomorrow against Gonzaga at South Windsor Arena. Chad Lacey now going up around the side. Behind the net. One-time chance looking top shelf. This goes wide. Now it's fired on net. Block there by Young. Another shot up front and fans on the shot. Cowie skating the other way. Trying to get some rest. St. Peter out of the zone. All Grand River at this end of the play. Puck set out in front by Lacey. But Wilson interferes and gets in the way. Young uses the board, plays it out. Giving chase is Foxen. Now Young out there with him. Trying to get around two defenders, he can't. His Renegades team, they'll have lots of ice, but they'll still want to get the puck as soon as they can off their sticks. Yeah, they, uh, they have no trouble getting it high off the glass, Brian. They just want to get it out of their end, take the safe route. There it is again, right? Yep, same play. Giving chase there is Nick Andriot. He won't get to the puck, though, and the puck will come all the way out into Renegade territory and back in for a faceoff inside St. Pete ends, 7.40 remaining in overtime. Yeah, that was a great observation by you. Uh, the Renegades just want to make the simple play in their own end, and why not in overtime? Be safe, get it out. We're going to chase that puck down, hopefully create a turnover, a St. Pete mistake. One can't score without puck possession, though, and St. Peter will have to try something. Lamar. Trailing with Hickey, upended. Good clean hit there. As Ogilvy keeps it in, a hit from behind on Hickey. Referees keeping the whistle in their pocket. Ellis using the board, can't clear it. Grand River moves up, loses the puck, and now we got a break of the other way. Merrill fighting for the puck along the side. He'll drop it off to Ogilvy. Ogilvy, way too many bodies in front, can't do anything. Lamar shoots it, hits the side of the net. Hickey throws it out front, can't find anyone. They muscle and grab the puck back though. Ellis, point shot, goes wide. Try to grab it, hit from behind. No call by either referee. Wow. Another shot, oh! scores! St. Peter wins in overtime! Wow, what a shot. We're just commenting on how uh, we, we saw non-call Brian, a check from behind on the St. Pete's forward. Lo and behold, next thing you know, they pick up that puck. I think everyone was looking at the player on the ice. St. Peter's buries a shot right between the legs of Gillingham for the game-winning goal. I what? believe that's Hickey who got the shot off. If it is, William Hickey, the assistant captain, gets the overtime goal with 6.44 remaining, and St. Peter is off to the semifinals to take on Villanova. We see Merrill there in front of the ice laying down. There comes the shot. We don't screened. know if Merrill got a tip on it. He may have screened. What a shot. What a goal by St. Pete. It goes to Hickey. And the number one seed continues on on their undefeated trek. They are 4-0, but they've got another 4-0 team in their wake in the Villanova Wildcats. What a game. Yeah, William Hickey coming up big, but what a play. Uh, you know, something we thought should have been a penalty uh, on St. Pete's wasn't called, but you know, this is the way things go and the way hockey rolls. A non-call, puck goes to the player, takes a shot, goaltender makes a big save, puck squeezes between his legs. Great, great hockey game this afternoon, Brian. It was a pleasure to work this one with you. Pleasure to watch.
And there's so much more hockey left starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. We will have semifinal coverage. This St. Peter team looking to continue their undefeated streak against the one seed and the 16 seed. The Villanova Wildcats, also 4-0, will meet in the semifinal. The other semifinal will happen tomorrow at South Windsor. We're going to assume St. Mary, who has a 6-2 lead in the third period, will hang on. They will take on Gonzaga. The winner of that game, of course, will meet in the gold medal. We have the bronze and the gold medal game for you. Here, live tomorrow on WeTV, the bronze medal game at 1 p.m., the gold medal game at 3 p.m. Yeah, that's great. What a great, great hockey day. We look forward to everyone coming back and joining us tomorrow on WeTV. And, uh, Brian, it's been a pleasure working with you for sure. Great hockey in store for all high school fans tomorrow. We're going to get our player of the game interview with Dominic Papa in just a moment. We're going to throw it to a quick commercial. When we come back, more exciting Offsa AAA hockey action. You are watching the Offsa Boys AAA Hockey Championship exclusively on WeTV. It was one of the most beautiful summer's day. Pushing the guy aside, and then I was on a burst of speed. It started out as a very bad marriage breakup. One day he said, you guys want to get on your bikes? I remember the coconut guys, remember the beach. My memory of going to New York City was just elating. I decided that I'm going to Scotland. That's me crossing the goal line. I remember going out on the lake. When I reached that rock, I thought of my mother and I knew that I had done it. He takes the lid off and all these creepy crawly worms on and he would pretend to eat them. I just remember us circling around out in the park. She just looked up at me and she said, I really love the new house, mummy. <laughs> you know, I, I hope that was a memory for him too. Putting the key in the lock and knowing that we were, we were gonna be okay. Would you give up that memory for money? No. I, I, Absolutely not. It's too too close to the heart. No. No, no, I don't even have to think about it, no. A comprehensive financial plan and an investors group consultant will help get more out of your money so you can get more out of life. Welcome back to the Vol Volmer Center, the site of the 2016 Offs of AAA Boys Hockey Championships. It's quiet in here right now, but about uh, two or three minutes ago, this place was electric as the uh, St. Peter's team uh, punches their way into the semifinals. They defeat uh, their opponent from Kitchener today, 3-2 to two in overtime. We met this gentleman yesterday, Will Hickey. He was uh, the player of the game yesterday. He duplicates that role here this afternoon uh, with a game-winning goal in overtime. How good does that one feel, Will? Oh, uh, really good, yeah. Uh, Grand River's a really great team. Uh, w it was a really hard game. Uh, feels great to come out on top, though, of course, but uh, they deserve all the respect for sure. It's a great game. Take me through the goal, Will. Uh, do you remember it and, and uh, how you ended up uh, able to put it back in the back of the net? Uh, yeah, I think I just got it in the corner and peeled out. Uh, looked for the pass, nothing really there, so I guess I just fired on net and uh, managed to go in five holes, so that was really fortunate. Uh, then blocked out after that, not really too sure what happened after that one. <laughs> Yeah, you were buried after that. That was, uh, Two points in this game, well, I think that stand out. Obviously, the game-winning goal scored by yourself, but there was that late goal in the period right at the buzzard. Uh, how did that change the game, if it did at all? Uh, yeah, that had a huge impact on the game. Uh, I mean, they were up one. We managed to get one back there, and then 1-1 uh, one, one against a really good team is obviously pretty nerve-wracking, but uh, with, I think, probably about a second left, uh, Charles Cowie managed to score, so that was really huge. Uh, brought our spirits up and uh, uh, made us... Made us uh, just pretty confident going to the third period. Right now, it's just got to be adrenaline. I would imagine it's going to hit you at some point, the fatigue factor. How about the rest of you and your teammates? Uh, how tough at this point to just to keep uh, pushing yourselves and finding the reserves in the tank? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, uh, con conditioning is a huge factor. Like, uh, all of us have been playing all year, uh, working up to this point. So uh, we're obviously tired, but our heart's carrying us through it. We really want this one. Well, you're a step away. You're in the semifinals. Congratulations on that, Will. Great game, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, Will Hickey, our Investors Group player of the game. He scores the game-winning goal in overtime here. They defeat uh, 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 Graben, Gravenhurst, I should say, 3-2, uh, to two and punch their ticket, like I said, to the semifinals. Speaking of the semifinals and speaking of games tomorrow, we TV will be back here again uh, tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m. for our first game. And then we'll take a little bit of a break and we'll come back with the bronze medal game at 1 o'clock. 
the gold medal game at 3 o'clock. Bill Kelso and Steve Conger will have the call for you. Going to be a lot of great action here tomorrow as these Offsa championships come to a conclusion. Hope you enjoyed the telecast today. Once again, our final score uh, here this afternoon is Grand River, I should say. I apologize. Gravenhurst, it's Grand River. Uh, is defeated by uh, St. Peter's 3-2. to two. That's the story here. On behalf of everybody at Wii TV, uh, Steve Pronger, Brian Thompson, this is Dominic Papa wishing you a great afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all again soon.